Irene is being blamed for at least 42 deaths in 12 states, and the damage from the storm could add up to cost more than $10 billion. In North Carolina, where Irene first came ashore, 1,100 homes were destroyed. The storm also left millions without power, disrupted transportation services, and damaged millions of dollars worth of crops. For a closer look at Irene's economic impact, University of Maryland economics professor Peter Morisi joins us this morning. Peter, good morning to you. Nice to be with you. It's good to have you. Give us the bad news first. You think Irene's cost could be much higher than 10 or even $20 billion? Well, certainly the property damage will be in the range of $20 billion. A lot of it will never be tallied. It'll be in the basements of, of flooded homes and things like that, uncovered by insurance. But also there's the lost economic activity of the last several days. After all, people without power can't go to work. It's not a pretty picture. But, but you say this isn't all bad, that there is some good news here. What is that? Well, in a lot of communities, when they rebuild, for example, uh, along the beaches of the Carolinas, they often rebuild with better structures, bigger structures, which add to the commercial vitality of the region. I saw this some 20 years ago in the area of South Carolina below Myrtle Beach. After a major hurricane, uh, some very old homes were replaced by newer ones with larger capacity, and the commercial activity in the area just boomed. So for these communities that have been slammed by disaster, you're saying that with government spending, some of these communities can be in a better place now than they were before? It's not just government spending, private insurance, uh, personal investment, things of that nature. It's all different pieces coming together. Washington can't handle this by themselves. So, so when you mention that, I want to bring up FEMA here. They're saying that they only have $800 million. They're on the verge of being broke here. And, and not to mention, they've frozen all projects, including some of the big ones from Hurricane Katrina, just to make up for Irene. So what's happening here? Well, essentially, we've got a political game going on in Washington. Everyone knows that some money has to be freed up to assist these people. There's just not enough money in the jar right now. And uh, the Republican Congress is saying to the president, well, you'll have to cut someplace else. Whether he cuts someplace else or just spends more money, more money is needed to meet the federal commitments to aid the victims of this disaster, period. Uh, we're going we're to stay on the topic of Washington here. The president uh, outlining his plan to get Americans back to work. You think we'll see another spending bill proposed? Well, whatever he proposes, it's going to cost money. Whether it's tax incentives to hire or additional spending, it's money out of the budget. So one way or another, the Congress is going to have to cut someplace else or increase the deficit, which is unlikely. My feeling is he's going to come up with some kind of idea that the Republicans have advocated in the past, some kind of tax incentive. So they're on the dime to pass it. All right, Peter Morisi joining us from Washington this morning. Peter, always good to have you. Thanks. Nice to be with you.